This is the Preston Hour. Lego. You know, uh, we talk a lot about war, war, more, more, war. But I'm going to talk a little bit about paradise. Let's talk about paradise, my night. We'll be talking about Queen Sheba. We'll be talking about Lilith. Which is a beautiful conversation because, you know, Lilith is a derogatory term. It literally just means, you know, monster, you know what I mean? All that. So she wouldn't call herself a monster. So. Even to call Lilith, Lilith, you know what I'm saying, is derogatory. Her name is not Lilith. Lilith is not some original name of hers. It was never part of her family. You're just calling her a dragon, pretty much. They're calling her a monster, a beast, right? So let's talk Sheba. Let's talk Queen Sheba. Let's talk spices. And let's talk the sense of paradise. What does paradise smell like? Let's, let's let's get a little smelly smell, a little, a little smelly this time around, man. In a good way. In a good way. I'm talking the smells of paradise. The word paradise in most cultures refers to a tropical paradise, not by accident. In the same sense, the sense associated with Paradise, aloes wood, ginger, comfort, cinnamon are not coincidental. If the idea of paradise as a group of islands of the blessed <laughs> has its origin rooted in a real place, in Austronesia, aromatics were derived more from fresh flowers and plants rather than dried ones like spices. Of course, the shipment of aromatics in dried form is a practical consideration. The Tahitians extracted the, the essences of fragrant flowers into coconut oil used as for perfume, massage, and skin therapy. In the mountains of the Philippines, warriors rubbed themselves with fresh ginger before battle. People all over all Austronesia adorned themselves with the most odiferous flowers strung together in lays or crowns or beautiful um, and places behind, placed behind the ear. Aromatherapy, aromatherapy and fumigation with aromatics was widely practiced. The widespread of citrus in herbal medicine derives in large part from the fragrance of these fruits. Fragrance also plays an important part in the cuisine of many Austronesian people. Lemongrass, lemon, ginger, and mint are common fragrances associated with cooking in the region. Hey man, shout out to Chef Candy, man. She just cooking up a brand new bot, a brand new bot on the way. She'll be back with Zan cooking uh, and get them fragrances popping off, man. Look out for that Zan cooking. For a people where the sense of smell is so important to culture, it would be natural that they would also like to bring at least some of these scents with them. Ancient tropical Asian spices found at ancient sites, such as cloves, turka, whole or cloves was found in turka, whole orange in Thebes, uh, opium poppy in Deir el Bari. Black pepper and mummy of Ramses the second, camphor and mummy of Ramses the fifth, silk and Egyptian mummy uh, dated around 1000 BC, cinnamon, north northern Mediterranean in the sixth and seventh century BC, and cinema cinnamon 
Sinamomum. Sinamomum. Kafora. In the P U M Pum, the second mummy. Now, what is the chances that all these spices have to do with originating in America? And that it was so important to be buried with these particular spices to let them know where these people, you know, saying came from or, you know, where they had visited, you know, in the most that they came from paradise, man, or that they visited paradise either way. So, um, you know, what does it got to do with paradise? Monaco? What's it got to do with you? And they keep saying Asia. And I'm asking you, uh, does North America exist? The sacred incense and anointing oil in many cultures consists primarily or entirely of aromatics originating, originating in southern or excuse me, southern Asia. For example, the holy anointing oil of Exodus 30, 23 is believed by some experts using ancient sources to consist of mirth, cinnamon, cassia, C-A-S-S-I-A and lemongrass or sweet calamus. Ka Kalamus, Kalelu, I mean, any significance. Three of these four ingredients originate in South, South, <laughs> Southeast Asia. These aromatics were often used to recreate the atmosphere of paradise, Managa. So they had to be popping off the aroma of paradise. Now, what does aroma got to do with anything? Hey, this is the Preston John investigation. Aroma has to do with everything right we're talking we're talking the magical aroma that can heal you my night we're reading Preston john books talking about that there was a a magical smell or aroma that once you smelled it all your problems went away <laughs> so what does smell have to why do you have a nose then my night why do you have a nose man Hey, man, can't you smell something fishy over there, man? Them trying to hijack our aroma. Why are they cutting down certain trees? Because they have to destroy the magic, the aroma, that wakey, wakey smell, that wakey, wakey. Why are they doing all this chemtrailing? Anything to do with the aroma? Let's go, man. These aromatics were used often to recreate the aroma or the atmosphere. <laughs> oh, it's not just about the smell. It's about the atmosphere, which must be connected to the mesosphere or the mesh sphere, my lucky. <laughs> the Moses sphere. But we ain't talking no ball. We ain't talking no ball. They're recreating the atmosphere of paradise. They brought. The aromas, the aromatics from paradise or America, Managi, North America, the West, Managi, you know what I'm saying? We're really all over because <laughs> this is all Eden. You know, whether you're talking Virginia, whether you're talking, you know what I'm saying, the Carolinas, you know, all the way to Manhattan, Managi. All this is paradise to these Nagas. So it just so happens that, you know, with the Grand Canyon popping off, these great trees over here in the southwest were very important to the aromatics. Now they may say Southeast Asia, but get some orientation. Where's Asia and where's East? <laughs> we just talking uh, real spill, man. Love to the bro, man. Your Huntington popping off, man. Let's go. So, for example, the holy anointing oil of Exodus 30, 23. All right. So, man, just just connect the aromatics to the atmosphere. You might, you know, see why it's so important to get rid of the aroma of paradise. What happens to the atmosphere? They start to terraform the, the place, right? They start to change the atmosphere, the energy, frequency, vibra vibration, man. You know, it's all come into play. The Garden of Eden is all about that vibration, that atmosphere. If you go into somebody's house, 
It's a certain, a certain atmosphere to a home, right? You're like, oh man, it's a nice home. I feel the atmosphere. I feel the, I, I can smell the aroma. <laughs> Somebody cooking some cookies, man. It's all good. Aloe's wood, all right? We got to recon the aloe's wood. Let's go. The main ingredient in holy incense used by Buddhist, Christians, Muslims throughout the world is associated with the Eden in Jewish tradition. Where is Eden in the Hebrew tradition? Where did Columbus, where did Columbus call Eden? Where did Columbus call the Orinoco River flowing out of terrestrial paradise? Yeah, he said it. He said it. That this river I'm, I'm seeing flowing through South America, Venezuela, this Orinoco River must be connected to terrestrial paradise. It's so great. It's so magnificent, my knock. That this Orinoco, this Orinoco must be connected to the cities of gold. What tree does it flow out of? Mount Roraima. Uh, the devil tree of El Dorado, they say, huh? We're talking the cities of gold. We're talking El Dorado, which means we're talking Kalelus, Cibola. Sheba, which is the seven, as in the seven cities of gold. Sheba, uh, spices. Man, this is <laughs> Preston John. I said spices, I said Sheba, I said Khalifa, I said Lilith, first woman of creation. OG, Queen Mama. Not to be worshipped, but for sure, you know, to be given great honor like you would give Adam and Abraham and everybody else. Shout out to my queens, shout out to my aquas. We're doing it for my aquas. Aquas got us popping off. So this garden of Eden is directly connected to aloe's wood. So we got to recon aloe's wood and connect that directly to what? South America, Venezuela, you know what I'm saying? North America, Southeast, Southwest, wherever. We're just talking Eden, right? We're talking paradise. The Muslims also consider ginger and camphor as scents coming from paradise. The first group of people who will enter paradise will be glittering like the moon on a full moon night. They will neither spit therein, nor blow their noses therein, nor relieve nature. Their utensils therein will be of gold and their combs of gold and silver and their censers. The aloes wood will be used and their sweat will smell like musk. <laughs> That's out the Bukhari chapter four. All right. They will be given to drink their uh, therein of the cup tempered with ginger. That's that Quran, Surah 76, verse 18. The virtuous shall be given a drink which is tempered with camphor from a spring there, there where from the servants of their power drink but we know we're talking about our creator thus cause it to gush forth through their own efforts what water what cam for what spring my naga what spring we're asking the questions what spring what come for for those who had been there the sense of paradise transported them back to Eden. If I haven't said the name of this book yet, I might have just started popping off. Sometimes I do that, Sherlock. I'm really, it's like, what are you reading, Drop? This is popping off. All right, man, this book is called Quest of the Dragon and Bird Clan by Paul Kakai Manas Manansala. M-A-N-A-N-S-A-L-A. M-A-N-A-N-S-A-L-A. Lego. I'm on page 68. 
So check out his flows. I check out his flows. For those who have been there, the sense of paradise transported them back to Eden. For others, it gave a whiff of the wonders, the blessed of the wonders of the blessed lands. These spices are still important today, although we forgot the connection to the aroma. So, you know, these are some aromas that start popping off around your house, man. It might wakey wakey your ass. You know, it might make you remember what paradise smell like. Would that pop off any of your memory, my not? We talking aromatherapy, man. Let go. These spices are still important today in more than religious ceremonies. One of the best examples of this involves a look into the formulas for the various Coca-Cola drinks. New popular world. Managa, are they using our paradise against us and bottling it up and selling it back to us to get us? You know what I mean? You got Coke, cocaine. You got this Coca-Cola. All these are original, you know, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're talking poppy seeds or whether you're talking, you know what I mean? These particular um, uh, spices, you know what I'm saying? They're flavoring Coca-Cola with the spices of paradise, dude. Are you, are you, are you, are you out of your mind, Bone? Is it really happening, man? <laughs> is there a reason why it's just magical that it lasts forever everyone will always love coca-cola <laughs> because of the spices my noggin wow that's that, that's up right there that's up all right so the following flavorings are used in the original coca-cola recipe and pepsi all right pepsi's no different so they say oh you think you're the only one with the job we're gonna do the same thing so we could do our own cola if we were into soda, you know, but we could do our own stuff flavored with the uh, spices of paradise, my naga. For the naga, you dig? Notice that with the exception of coriander, all of the other flavors are of Southeastern Asian origin. Where's Asian? So here's the uh, spices in Coca-Cola. Originally, maybe not today, but originally. You have oil, orange, oil, cinnamon, oil, lemon, Coriander, nutmeg, and something called Neroli. N E R O L I. Pepsi got lime juice with the oil, lemon, oil, orange, cinnamon oil. So you see, they needed the lemon, the orange, and the oil. Pepsi added the lime. Pepsi added 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 the lime. Uh, they don't have the coriander in Pepsi, but they do have the nutmeg. So they both have. The lemon, orange, cinnamon, and the nutmeg. Oh, wait a minute. They do got the coriander and Pepsi. So both of them got the same five ingredients. Orange, cinnamon, lemon, coriander, and nutmeg. The difference is that Coca-Cola got the Neroli, N-E-R-O-L-I, and Pepsi has what's called Petite Grain, P-E-T-I-T -E Grain. That's it. <laughs> oh, and Pepsi got a little lime juice. You know, that's it. So that's cray cray right there. The apples of Eden. Let's get to this. Let's make our dismount right here. When Marco Polo visited India, he said that the locals considered the banana as Adam's apple. I keep hearing this banana talk, man. We also hear that uh, the pineapple is, you know, could be the apple as well. You also got the pomegranate. You know, these are all competitors for this uh, Adam's apple let's go Muslims and medieval Christians also believe the banana was the forbidden fruit with the Adam and Eve used banana leaves to cover themselves after temptation previously we mentioned that the banana tree fit fairly well with the description of the tree described in the book of Enoch Greek legend speaks of the golden apples of the Garden of Hesperides that was located beyond the river Oceanus at the outer limits of the world. Are we talking about worlds beyond the poles? The banana tree occurs as the tree of life or the tree of death. The two are related in many Southeast Asian and Pacific cultures. In Asia, Persia, the fruit was thought to Grant perpetual youth, fountain of youth. Hmm, back to the Preston, right? Interestingly, in some Pacific cultures, 
As in ancient Hawaii, the tree was forbidden to women. <coughs> Whoa, okay. So this banana tree was forbidden to women in some Pacific cultures. Something that reminds us of the temptation of Eve and the Freudian, Freudian aspects of the banana. The taboo on bananas for women may be connected with the widespread notion in the Pacific that bananas increase male potency. From the health standpoint, bananas are rich in mucilage, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. The plant is good at absorbing nutrients from the soil in the form of colloidal minerals. They are also one of the best sources of triotophan, T-R-Y-P-T-O-P-H-A-N, and which regulates serotonin, the neurotransmitter that affects mood and emotion. Love to my jigger, serotonin in my brain. As ester in banana oil, and ester in banana oil gives the fruits sweet fragrance, which is known to strongly attract mosquitoes. Bananas may have been one of the first domesticated fruit crops. The practice of vegeta vegetative propagation of crops in Southeast Asia and the Pacific dates back to at least 17,000 years ago. And goes back even to 30,000 years. The banana appears to have been cultivated startling or starting at at least 10,000 years ago. The area between Indonesia and New Guinea is believed to have been given rise to the diploid and plantain and the hybrid Maya Mali Papulu banana. The diversity of plantains is highest on the island of Luzon. Look, if you don't know about it now, when you start digging on Preston John, it's going to take you to the herbs. <laughs> It's going to take it to the flowers. It's going to take it to the spices, my nagi. It's going to take it to the Orinoco flow and the tree of life. It's going to take it to the Voynich manuscript that has all this drop in it that's, you know, still in this encrypted Hebrew that even MIT and Yale and Harvard, nobody can decode the Voynich manuscript. They say it's Indian uh, stylized. Uh, Hebraized, <laughs> they can't decode it. It's encrypted. It's encryption on encryption on encryption, dating back from the 12th century. Who is Preston John? And what's the importance of all these plants, man, for the dismount? According to archaeologist Dr. Felix Kami, the oldest bananas in Tanzania, or Tan, excuse me, Tanzania, <laughs> Tanzania. Using associative dating may go back more than 4,000 years. Evidence of bananas in southern Cameroon dates to 2,500 years ago. Let's take it back home, man. The diversity of banana species around the Great Lakes region, shout out to my Michio Kans, suggests this is the area to which they were introduced from the east. Evidence of plantains in the same region dates to at least 3,000 years ago. The Maya Mali Papulu banana seems to have been introduced into Ecuador during pre-Columbian days via transoceanic voyages, possibly some 2,000 years ago, or it was already here. They always got to give you some supposed, uh, you know, journey across the Atlantic. Well, we figure it came from the east. That it must have been at least 2,000 years. Man, stop it, man. You found it here pre-Columbian. Pre IJ. So you can't you can't tell the banana where it come from. You just found it here. Let's go. If the banana was considered beneficial to health, <laughs> we're talking bananas, man. Only only the wave. Let's go. How much more so those that came from the islands of the blessed? Whoa. So if the banana is considered beneficial to health, how much more so those that come from the islands of the blessed, where all the plants and mushrooms were thought to bestow renewed youth. Here's an example of a myth with the banana as the tree of life or death. All right, for the desma. An, Indo an Indonesian legend gives the banana a cruel role at the beginning of human society, the creator. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's pop it off. It says the creator one day let down a stone 
on the end of a rope, as was his way with his gifts to his creatures. However, the first man and woman scorned the stone and asked for something else. The creator complied. The story continues. And hauled away at the rope, the stone mounted up and up until it vanished from sight. Presently, the rope was seen coming down from heaven again. And this time there was a banana at the end of it. The man and woman were delighted, but then heard the patriarch's voice boom out because you have chosen a banana. Your life shall be like its life. When the banana tree has offspring, the parent stem dies. So shall you die and your children shall step into your place. Wow. That's a whole nother story with a very simpler, with a very similar model, right? With a very similar purpose. Choose up. In a sense, you know, in that story of the Garden of Eden, you know, did the creator know that they were going to, you know, eat from this tree? Of course, you know, in a sense, but, you know, so goes the story or, you know, so, so, so it must be done. At the same time, it's almost like, I can teach you. I can teach you everything you want to know. Or here's your shortcut. And if you take this shortcut, be prepared for everything that comes with it. Because you're not going to have the fullness of the lesson. You're going to have to, <laughs> you're going to have to get into the wilderness to figure this out. Because by the time you get jammed up, you're going to need a savior. And you know who that's going to be? Me. Why? I am your only savior, right? Isaiah 43. But if you want to eat and get your wisdom, like the serpent says, right? Get your wisdom. It's not as it, we always flip it. Like, is the creator so mean to his children that he won't let them leave the house after midnight? Would you let your children leave the house after midnight? Your babies, your three year old, your one year old. <laughs> So, yes, the creator is protecting them. Oh, you have this big, juicy steak. You know what I mean? You know, let's just, you know, just go with me. Go with me. You ain't going to give your children none of that big, juicy steak. It is a big, juicy steak. He's one years old. He ain't ready for this. Now you say, why put that steak in the garden? <laughs> you got to ask the creator, man, you know. Only, only Hawa knows, man. But it's a steak. Now, you know, you can, you can go get that steak, or you know, what I'm saying you can get that wisdom, cause you need it right now. But Hawa's like, I could teach you though. I, I could teach you right, man. I can, I can be your father. I can be your mother. Rock with me. I'll teach you. You choose. You choose, man. You know, it's a choice. That's what we do have. And right now we choosing up a noggin. Last part is this. Man, so we're talking about the banana in the garden, man. <laughs> so why I said, when the banana tree has offspring, the parent stem dies, so shall you die. And your children shall step into your place. Had you chosen the stone, your life would have been like the life of stone, changeless and immortal. This is the Press the Hour. Allah.